Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where I like to make, create, and inspire fun art things with you. Today I have some more St. Patrick's Day decor DIYs that are so fun and look as if they were store bought and I'm super excited to share them with you. So come along with me and let's art today. For my first DIY, I will make a gorgeous wreath. I have a 14 inch wreath form that is already covered with some purple burlap that I had used at a previous project many years ago. I have some of these foam eggs that I actually purchased from Michaels. It was one of their $5 grab bags years ago as well. I have this happy St. Patrick's Day Dollar Tree sign that I just thought was so cute with the little feet and hat on it. Some foam scatters and I will use some gold coins. So the first step into making this wreath is working on these eggs. I want to cut the eggs in half the long ways. I first started off with this exacto knife and then I switch it out for a kitchen serrated knife. Each knife works good but the serrated knife does leave a bigger mess than the exacto knife. Please remember any type of cutting tool that you use be extra careful in not cutting yourself. And I continued doing this process until all of the eggs were cut in half. Here are all the eggs cut in half. Some of them are a little bit more messy because that's where I used the serrated knife and some of them are smooth from the X-Acto knife. Now it's time to decorate the eggs. And the only reason I'm using these foam eggs is because of the shape. I wanted these to look like moss covered rocks and that's what I had on hand. So how I'm doing that is taking some hot glue, putting it all over the egg adding the green floral moss that I purchased at Dollar Tree and putting it in the area where the hot glue is. I continue this process until the whole egg is filled and in between sections, I am taking my scissors, cutting it down as close to the egg as possible to keep that shape intact. This part of decorating the eggs does take quite some time, but to help me out, I did put some music in the background to help push me through, but I enjoyed this process. It was very therapeutic, and the end result came out so gorgeous that it was so worth it. And I will continue this process until I have all the eggs I like covered. Now it's time to assemble everything together. As you see, the pile of moss balls or rocks that I have over to the side. I want to use this Happy St. Patrick's Day sign. At first, I wanted to just use the words, but as I was um, removing everything from the string and placing it down, I realized I like the hat and feet better. So that's what you'll see me doing here, is just trying to figure out where I wanna put everything before adding on the moss balls. After I realize I'm just using the hat and feet, I'm just finding the right position where I want to place them onto the wreath. I do place it at a slant and I adhere everything using my hot glue gun. I do add some wooden cubes that I purchased at Dollar Tree on the back of the hat and the feet just to keep them in an upright position. Now it's time to attach our moss rocks to the wreath form as well. Once again, I'm using hot glue to attach everything together. I do put in those foam three leaf clover scatters onto the wreath form. And then I also add some green leaves to add some interest into the wreath as well. I was really going for a woodsy, earthy feel for this wreath, so that's why I added a lot of greenery to it. I wanted it to be like a gnome leprechaun himself would hang this on his door, and I think I accomplished that. I continue filling up the wreath until it's completely full. I go in also with some of those gold coins and I glue them in sporadically just to give it a hint and pop of color of gold throughout the wreath. 
I am really enjoying decorating using that green floral moss from Dollar Tree and I have used it throughout some of my St. Patrick's Day decor. If you missed out, I'll be sure to link it here in the cards for you and also in the description box below. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to do so today. If you hit that subscribe button, also be sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube always notifies you every time I upload a new video and I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. And here's how the wreath turned out and I absolutely just love this thing. It is so gorgeous. It does remind me of a high-end wreath that you will find at the big box stores that would cost about $50 to $60 without it being on sale and I just made it for a couple of dollars. This is so cute and I think it would be perfect for any early springtime decor and also especially for St. Patty's Day because I added the three leaf clovers and the gold coins and the little hat and feet. Tell me how you think this wreath turned out in the comments section below. Do you think it's high end or do you think it's, you know, average? <laughs> Moving on to DIY number two, which is the easiest DIY out of the three today. I have this jar that I kept <laughs> because I love the shape of the glass and I also just keep jars to have on hand. Does anybody else do that? I would love to know in the comment section down below. I am covering it up using my chalk sheepskin colored paint and I'm using a foam brush because I am dabbing it onto the glass because I want to get that rigid concrete type texture onto the glass. I continue that until the glass is completely covered. Next I'm going in with my gray chalk paint. It's called Castle but it's a gray tone and I'm adding it all over the glass. I'm adding some depth to it because I want this glass to look like a concrete jar. And I continue that process all over the glass, let it dry completely. Then I go in with my Java chalk paint and do the same te technique all over the jar. Here's what the jar looks like when it's completely dried and it does really feel and look like concrete. To me, it does have that concrete texture because the chalk paint is so thick it adds a little bit of texture with that sponge. Next, I'm going in with some Dollar Tree floral. I have some of these fat leaves. I don't remember the name of the leaves and some of this floral from the St. Patrick's Day as well. I'm just adding it to the spout on top of the jar. Lastly, I'm adding some ribbon that I purchased at Dollar Tree. It's in this green gingham style or buffalo check style. I don't know the difference to be honest. And I'm just wrapping a bow around it and that is it for this project. And here's how this glass jar turned out. I just love it. It's so simple. You can add it on an end table, on top of a mantle, wherever you like. And I just love how I can reuse the bottle for different projects to come. Jumping into DIY number three, I have this leftover love sign that I purchased at Dollar Tree a couple years ago actually that I already had on hand. I will be using the back of this sign and hands down this has to be one of my favorite DIYs that I made. I'm covering the back of the sign using my favorite sheepskin colored off-white and I give it a good solid one coat.
After the paint has completely dried, I am now taking a pencil and I'm sketching in my drawing, which is going to be a little gnome friend. I absolutely love it. Like I said, I'm just sketching it in, but if you do not want to hand paint this or sketch it, you can always um, print out an image, cut it out, glue it onto the board. If you have a Cricut, you can use a Cricut machine. I'm just free handing it because I love to paint and draw. This sign reminds me of those signs that you can find at craft store or big box stores for three times as much as you painting it yourself. And it comes out so much cuter. I'm taking a light green Posca paint pen and I'm outlining his hat. After I have the outline where I want it, it gives me a guide to fill in his hat using my Irish green chalk paint. And don't worry about those lines on the side, I do erase them and paint over them. Now I'm just taking some orange regular acrylic paint and filling in his beard. And I do go in with some sheepskin chalk paint and add some highlights to his beard and give him some hair like texture. Next to fill in his shoes, I'm going in with an acrylic paint called grass green. I wanted to give the gnome's hat some more details, so I'm taking some yellow acrylic paint first and making little circles all over his hat. Then I go in with some different color paint pens and give more circles, adding some variations of colors and sizes. And lastly, to fill up his nose, I'm using a mustard yellow. And here's how my little gnome friend turned out. I did add some highlights to his nose and I did outline everything using a black Posca paint marker and I absolutely just adore him. Like I said earlier, it does remind me of those painted signs at craft stores and Walmart stuff like that for so much money and I made one by myself for literally a dollar and it's so cute let me know what you think in the comments down below and like always my little gnome friend needs a name so if you have any suggestions I would love to know in the comment section down below I love all the suggestions that you guys give me those names that everybody comes up with are so adorable here are all the projects that I've done today I had an absolute blast making them but hands down my favorite is the little gnome friend if you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button I would love for you to stick around and be part of my virtual art family and if you enjoy today's content be sure to give this video a big thumbs up as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one